totally incredible. All right, so our next performance, I'm very excited to uh, bring up here because they, I've been looking at their costumes and they're beautiful. Um, what we're going to be having up here is a Nepal, Nepalese, right? Nepalese wedding. So um, weddings in Nepal are very different from the from here in America. There's not just you know a couple hours of partying like we do here in America, but it's three days long, three days of um, celebrating and feasting and just tons of fun. Um, I can only imagine how beautiful the weddings are there. Hopefully, maybe one day I'll get to see them. Um, anyway, so we have from t for today performing is the Nebraska Nepalese Association. And what they do here in Nebraska is they work on um, forming relationships between the community and the Nepalese um, culture, just getting us Nebraskans um, familiar with what they do in Nepal. So um, if you guys can join your hands together and welcome them to the stage. Um, the Nepalese wedding actually lasts for about three days, so you guys are stuck here till Monday. How's that? <laughs> All right. Um, again, um, I want all of you guys to keep in mind that the wedding celebrations are very, very um, big celebrations, and the, what we're so, trying to show here is very um, minuscule version of what we do at the actual wedding. Um, right now, what you can see is the the priest and um, uh, the family of the bride and the groom trying to negotiate. Um, the wedding procedure usually begins with an arrangement of a boy and a girl with comparable backgrounds, backgrounds being the status, the horoscope and all that stuff. And often with the help of a priest who are well known as matchmakers. So that's what he's trying to do there. In an arranged marriage, it is the parents who choose their children's partners and um, one additional note I'd like to mention is that children do have a say whether or not they like the match. So right now here, what we're doing is uh, agreeing to the match and the waiting is about to take place. The very first thing that happens is um, uh, the groom side of the family actually goes on to the, the bride's house at Janti, which is a gathering of the traveling party from the Coombs house, and the celebrations are made and the rituals are performed with the local priest and the party that travels to the bride village with the procession. Accompanied by a traditional band called Panche Baja, constituting of five instruments, the bride family welcomes the whole janti with a big treat and all the other social rituals are followed after that. Um, now begins the Swayambar celebration. Um, the Nepali bride and groom exchange gardens with each other, exchanging their rings. Swayambar usually takes place the same day of the wedding. The bride actually makes the rounds of the groom with water uh, to purify and protect him. Uh, again, the setup is very elaborate compared to what you see here, but we're trying to manage with what we have. So here's the bride making rounds of the groom to protect him with water, flowers, and all the, all the nice stuff. As she's making the rounds, the priest is actually uh, chanting mantras and worshiping the deities and stuff like that, so that you know the, the goddess and goddesses are always in the presence of the wedding ceremony. As you can see, there's a whole lot of hustle and bustle, you know, and that's very um, familiar with the weddings. There she's making that round.
And this is the first time actually the groom uh, gets to see the bride in her bridal attire. So this is a very uh, important moment in their lives. So here they're exchanging their garland. And then the exchanging of the rings. Uh, the Swiper celebration, this is what it's called, can actually um, happen a couple days prior to the actual wedding, or it may even happen the same day. In our case, we're doing the same hour, or actually the same 20 minutes, so. There, the um, family of the bride is actually welcoming the son-in-law to the family by putting Tika on his forehead. That is a very um, significant mark, saying that you are welcome to the family. All right, moving on, we have our next um, process. is called the Kuta Dune, or washing your feet um, celebration. The bride's family member wash the bride and groom's feet to purify them and put Tika on their forehead, wishing them good luck and giving them blessings. Daughters are considered baby, goddesses, the son-in-law considered a god. Traditionally, as the parents of the bride wash the feet of the bride and groom, they actually drink the water off of their feet, showing their respect and welcoming to the family. This tradition, however, is slowly being eliminated as the population is getting more educated. And it is not only the, um, the dad and the mom who actually washes the feet, and actually by the time the feet is washed, it's actually very clean, so the water is not too bad. Um, actually, it's the, the whole family does that celebration where they actually wash the feet of the bride and the groom, uh, welcoming them, purifying them, and blessing them. The next we have is the Jagika Puja, which is the actual celebration of the main wedding. It comprises of worshipping deities, here playing various kinds of games to strengthen the bond and bringing the family together. The Jagi is the Jagi or the, the setting where the um, marriage takes place. It's very elaborately decorated and the bride and groom spend about four to five hours worshipping and playing games at the Jagge. Here, the, bra the groom is actually putting the um, beads on the groom, signifying that they are now married. Uh, the red bead goes first, and then goes the green beads. Um, the green beads is actually considered very prized possession of Nepalese women, and it's worn only on special occasions. The bead actually signifies the marital status of a woman. Um, that's a very important part of a marital woman's um, attire. Um, now what's happening is sindoor or a pinch of red colored powder uh, put on bride's forehead by the groom. This symbolizes their now husband and wife. It's pretty much like the exchanging of rings here. This red color on the woman's forehead differentiates whether she is married or not. This is a very important mark on any woman's life. Um, if you see a, market, a woman in a market and see the red mark on her forehead, then you know for sure that she's married and you would not hit on her. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we have the Jagge Gumne procession uh, where the bride and the groom make the rounds of the setting where they're getting married. It not only symbolizes the homage or the reverence to the god and goddesses that are considered to be witnessing the marriage ceremony, but also signifies the tie that the bride and groom have now and the promise to walk together in every step of their lives. The bride leading the way and husband following the 
bright afterwards. In the real life, it, that's how it happens, right? Um, in the Jaggi, as I mentioned, there are different kinds of games that are played throughout to make the, the celebration more interesting. And uh, one of the other events that happens is called Maurkwani, or um, sharing the, the food. In Nepali culture, eating husband's leftover is considered a blessing. It is not practiced in everyday life anymore, but a wedding ritual still signifies that practice, and husband feeds the wife some of the yogurt after taking a bite. The wife denies it at first and demands some money or gifts or cash in advance to eat that, um, that stuff from him. The next ceremony we have is the Kuta Dhogli ceremony, or bowing your head down to the, to the husband's feet. It is a male-dominant society, though things are changing in Nepal. The wedding ritual still practices the bride bowing down to touch the groom's feet with her forehead, showing her greatest admiration and respect. In Nepali culture, bowing down in such manner signifies the utmost respect. While the, this thing is happening in the bride's side of the house, the groom's side of the family is also having a big celebration of their own. They are actually dancing, making fun, getting the house ready for the bride and groom to come to the house and stuff like that. That event is called Rathilhi. The women tend the household and get things ready for the bride and groom's arrival. And they using mockery and humor, create songs and dance and have a wonderful time as they await the newlyweds arrival. Um, the last but not the least of the procession at the wedding ceremony is the Anmaun ceremony or the, the bye, goodbye ceremony. The Pidai or the Anmauni takes place after the wedding, which is an emotional affair as the bride leaves her parental house and heads towards her husband's house to lead a new life. Brides usually end up crying and being emotional due to feeling of apprehension of leaving the home. Or it can just be a um, traditional record. I've actually heard that people pinch the bride if they do not really cry. So I guess crying is a good thing. Then the people from the groom's family moves back towards the groom's house with the newly wedded couple when they're welcomed by the Jalti Bakro, the feast of Gopi, along with singing and dancing ceremony, marking the celebration for the matrimony. Here, the groom takes the, the bride to his house. As the they reach the groom's residence, the sisters of the groom block the main door and do not let the newly married couple enter the house until the newlywed pledge to demand to the sisters. Sisters cash in on this opportunity to demand jewelry, clothes, and valuable items. After they promise to provide them with what they promise, and then only they are led in the house. After the celebration, after they enter the house, the mother-in-law and the the bride um, do the Turto party celebration, where the mother welcomes the bride by giving her mana party, a measuring cup that holds about a gallon. That signifies that the bride now has a share of the kitchen. This is a major handover to the bride. In Nepal, women rule the kitchen, and um, to let somebody into the kitchen is a significant event. And while they do that, um, it, they play different games as well, but we're not going to show that here. Now we're going to do the mukhegi, or greetings and meeting ceremony. The groom sits down with the bride, and then um, introduces each and every member of the family to the bride. The elders present the bride with welcoming gifts, consisting of jewelry and cash and clothes and whatnot. And the younger ones actually receive cash and gifts from the bride during this meeting and meeting ceremony. Um, it's actually a very long ceremony because all the family members um, and greet the, the newlywed. 
especially the bride, because we are seeing the bride for the very first time. And also, just the fact that, you know, they're getting gifts and cash and money, it just entices them to come and meet the bride. All right, once this ceremony is over, um, the bride and groom relax, and most of the times, the actual reception of the wedding does not happen until the next day or the day after, giving the bride and the groom some time to relax and freshen up. Um, so now we're going to show the reception and the celebration. Wedding are times of great celebrations, and Nepal is no exception for that. We know how to party. Um, closely following the wedding, we do um, the celebration by dancing, drinking, food, you name it. And it goes for hours and hours, nights and nights.